Uh, fellow Kenyans, the new year is a time to reflect with immense gratitude to God on the accomplishments and breakthroughs of the last 12 months. It is also a time for us all to reflect on what worked and what did not, and what we can reimagine in the new year. As we bid goodbye to 2021, we rejoice in the fact that 2022 gives us all an opportunity to do things better by offering us a reset. The new year is one for course correction and building back better. But there is always a challenge in a new year, in a new beginning. We tend, because it is easy, to celebrate the milestones of the past at the expense of making real our dreams of the future. And this is because the past is always visible and concrete. Its victories and failures are spread out for all to see. But the future is invisible to the naked eye. And only those with the lens of faith can see it. Only the bold and the courageous can achieve it. The past explains how we got here as a nation, but the future is an empty slate for us to draw on. The new year will therefore give each and every Kenyan 365 days of an empty page upon which they will either chronicle their stories of success or failure. As a nation, it is up to us to write our 2022 story, page by page, ensuring that each day will make Kenya better than it was the day before. So my fellow countrymen, each Kenyan generation in an unbroken chain all the way from the dawn of time to the present day makes a mark on our national fabric. Every generation that came before us made their contribution to the realization of our shared aspirations. And over the last nine years, my administration has built on the foundations of the previous three administrations, adding our bricks to theirs, so that the 2022 dream and beyond can be realized. This year, my administration continued to bridge the deficits that actually matter. We bridge the infrastructure deficit. We bridge the deficit of accessibility to quality health care and affordable health care. We bridge the deficit of a weak agricultural regulatory framework. And we also bridge the deficit of insecurity by scaling up on our security sector reforms, and we vastly improve the ease of doing business in Kenya, making it easier for Kenyans to thrive in enterprise. In the new year 2022, the nation will move closer to the realization of universal health coverage. Through our different programs, health care will be available to all and affordable to all. And this will be made possible because of the bold and progressive legislation that we have supported and is now law. Similarly, in 2022, several seminal state projects will be completed and the dividends of these public investments will be felt by Kenyans. In the early part of 2022, for instance, the CBC infrastructure program will have delivered 10,000 new classrooms across the country securing for our children 
a better environment for their education. Our landscape in the new year will also be redefined by the completion of the construction of major road arteries across every part of our nation. Notably, will be the iconic Nairobi Expressway that will be open for use in the first quarter of the new year. Away from Nairobi, we will also complete the Kisumu Mamboleo Road, the Eldoret Bypass, the Izibania Kisi Road, the Kibwezi Mutomo Kitui Miwani Road, the Gasen Witu Road, the Laisames Ngurut Road, the Makutano Kacheliba Konyayo Road in West Pokot, the Gong Suswa Road the Kenol Marwa Road, the Mombasa Roads infrastructure, the James Gishoro Rironi Road expansion, as well as the Mau Mau Roads. In the new year, the significant progress we have made in affordable housing, food security, and the expansion of domestic manufacturing will become more visible. Also notable will be the upgraded defense and internal security capabilities. In fact, fellow Kenyans, we have laid a superlative foundation for our external and internal defense upon which future administrations can build on. In keeping with our commitment to conservation and enhancing our heritage of splendor, in 2022, the Greening Kenya campaign is expected to lead us closer to the realization of the goal of a minimum of a 10% forest cover for our nation. The campaign will achieve this by the planting of an additional 1 billion trees. And I urge every Kenyan to support this worthy initiative, as well as all others that target the greening of our country. Environmental conservation and regeneration have direct and immediate tangible benefits. For instance, in 2022, the Nairobi metropolitan area will significantly address the issue of water scarcity that has plagued our metropolis through the completion of the Northern Collector Water Supply Project that is expected to double the water supply to Nairobi and her environs. Reforms in the energy sector will also continue apace with electricity prices expected to be reviewed even further downwards by the end of the first quarter of 2022. To boost tourism, trade, as well as social engagement and to bolster continental integration, our national carrier Kenya Airways will join hands with partners in South Africa to establish a Pan-African airline with unmatched continental reach and global coverage. In the new year, within the region, and for greater fraternity, security, and shared prosperity, Kenya will join the other members of the East African community in welcoming the Democratic Republic of Congo to our regional community. This eagerly awaited addition to the East African community will make our community stronger and more capable of delivering on the East African dream. Globally, Kenya's leadership on the international stage and our advocacy for a more free, fair, prosperous, and inclusive world will continue. We will continue to use our position in the United Nations Security Council to promote the cause of peace, harmony, reconciliation, and cooperation. So my fellow Kenyans, although we have built a strong foundation for generations to come, it is also important to note that we can destroy it in one single stroke. And that is why this New Year we must reflect on the irreducible minimums required for the survival of our nation state. 
For starters, we must choose leadership over politics. Leadership is about vision, while politics is about positions. Leadership is about the next generation, whereas politics is concerned merely with the next election. Indeed, fellow Kenyans, our obsession with politics has only slowed down the realization of our potential as a people. I say so because the colonizers introduced a virus in our African political systems. They made us believe that the political kingdom was more desirable than the economic one. And this pursuit of the political kingdom has only enhanced poverty in Africa. We must, brothers and sisters, rethink this model. Since chasing the political kingdom is a relic of the colonial order, the new frontier for us in Kenya must be economic development. Not hindered by, not contingent on politics. And there is empirical evidence worldwide to support this. Fellow Kenyans, despite COVID, for the last five years, we have recorded the most impressive growth in our economy. And this is because we separated the development agenda from politics. When we chose the path of peace and reconciliation over that of political strife and senseless competition, we gave our economy a chance to grow. In the second quarter of this year, I reported that our real GDP had grown by 10.1%. And the question on the lips of many was whether this unprecedented growth was sustainable. Today, I am equally happy to report that during the third quarter of this year, our real GDP grew by an impressive 9.9%. This means that the tempo of growth set by the second quarter, has been sustained. It also means that in the last six months, our real GDP has grown by an average of 10%. And this was made possible because we separated the economic agenda from politics. If we keep this trajectory, brothers and sisters, of economic development without politics, our country has a very real chance of reaching unprecedented heights. The second irreducible minimum is that we must continue as a country to uphold a justice system that restores and not one that merely punishes. A system that heals, not one that deepens wounds. A system that seeks to improve the law not to be enslaved by the law. More so because the law, without justice, is a national wound without cure. Thirdly, and to repeat a point that I have made before, we as Kenyans must choose the bold path over the popular path. We must choose the critical few who are bold over those who are not. Therefore, as we begin our new year, we must remember that a leader must take the bold path and blaze a trail for future generations, while a politician takes that popular path that pleases everyone, but takes them nowhere. If we are to become a breakout nation and a middle-income country, we must follow the path of the brave. So fellow Kenyans, let me end my address on two points. One, in 2021, we witnessed multiple waves of the COVID-19 infections. But with our sustained and controlled efforts, we managed to achieve the targeted positivity rate of less than 5% 
and we were therefore able to reopen our economy. But as it has happened across the globe, Kenya is today currently recording a surge of infections that started in mid-December, primarily fueled by the new Omicron variant. Despite its ease of transmissibility and infectiousness, thankfully, we are witnessing less severe infections, the majority of which need not be managed in our hospitals, but under well-established, home-based, isolation and care systems. Our critical care facilities are therefore not strained, and we remain on high alert to ensure that this remains so. Today, as we speak, 39 people are admitted in various ICU facilities countrywide with COVID-19. Of these, 19 are on ventilators and 20 on supplemental oxygen. Our heightened surveillance systems and continued cautious approach has so far borne fruit, and it's a clear indication that we must not let our guard down, but continue to follow the health protocols that we have issued. In March 2021, we began vaccination against COVID-19 as an additional mitigation measure against the disease. To date, as a country, we have received 23 million doses of our sorted vaccines and 10 million doses have been administered to our people. This means that we currently have over 13 million doses of the vaccine available countrywide. I today, on the eve of the new year, therefore appeal to all my fellow citizens who have not been vaccinated to turn out and receive this life saving protection. Our government targets to vaccinate 30 million people by the end of December 2022. In the past few months, I am happy to note that we have witnessed an increase in vaccination rates and so far 15% of our adult population is fully vaccinated. And to maintain immunity against the disease, my administration will shortly be rolling out a booster vaccine dose starting the 1st of January, 2022, for those who have completed the primary vaccination series in the last six months. Once again, we shall begin the booster doses by prioritizing the healthcare workers, security personnel, teachers, those with coexisting medical conditions, and those above the age of 50. I call upon this population to present themselves from tomorrow at the nearest vaccination center for this critical third shot. The second and final thing that I wish to say today has to do with our education system. The education calendar for the year will kick off in earnest on the 3rd of January, 2022. The 2022 academic year will feature four terms and not the usual three, so as to recover from the time lost after the COVID-19 disruptions. Consequently, KCPE and KCSE exams will be administered in March and April of 2022, and also in November and December of 2022. So to all our learners, we appreciate that just like in the year 2021, 
the 2022 academic calendar will similarly be long and challenging. However, let 2022 be a year of destiny, of dreams becoming a reality, and for the laying of foundations for a much better future. And in that regard, I take this very early opportunity to wish all our examination candidates the very best in the upcoming year's examinations. So I conclude, fellow citizens, by saying that it is my prayer that 2022 will be a year where plenty will be found within our borders, a year where leadership will reign supreme over politics, a year of bold decisions as opposed to popular decisions, a year where justice will be our shield and defender, and the law will only serve as its tool. Let the first dawn of the next year be one that brings bountiful blessings for us as individuals, as families, communities, and as a nation. To all those who have suffered loss in 2021, let 2022 be a year of healing, restoration, and revival. Whether you are in Kenya or in the diaspora, I wish each and every one of you a happy and prosperous new year, a safe 2022, and remember that each one of us must continue to be our brother's keeper and our sister's keeper too. May God bless you all, and may God continue to bless this great Republic of Kenya.